So what's going on? Life. I'm... Tell me, tell, tell me about you. You, you were, uh, you were active in the Denver gang scene whenever you were a kid. We all were. Um, but I've told my story. My story only goes so far, right? Um, what was your view? You, you were a cheeky thirty. Yeah. Yeah. And what was your view of Denver as, as far as that's concerned with the Chicano Crip thing? Because that's not that's not normal across the United States. And what's you what was your view of that growing up? So, you know, like there's two different gangs, right? So it started out supposed to be just like the brown. You know what I mean? Like a, a Mexican, well, there's a lot of South, South Dorians and Hondurans too, but uh, so it's supposed to be just brown, white flaggers, not blood or crip. And the oldies were Mexican gang wearing black. And then the, some of the cheekies went to the east side and started being hanging around the Crips and start, so they started calling 30 Crips. And the oldies started red flagging. And that war started, but- Why did that war start? Just based on more racism than anything. So oldies pretty much hated the Crips because it was black. You know what I mean? And there were Mexicans in the E. And you know, their, their 13's pretty much from Mexican too, except different from Sudano foods, but, and that's kind of how I was raised too. I always thought, you know, Crip and Blood was black until I realized half my cousins were Bloods, you know what I mean? So, you know, like I'm related to Baby Bugsy because his sister's like my second cousin or something. That's the one who looks white. Yeah, Josh. Right. Yeah. And then- uh, Short, stocky food, looks yep. like a white boy. Yeah, and then my cousin Turtle, He's, he was a case of, you know, he's resting now. And I guess I had an older brother from my dad. He was a blood too. I never knew it was like so, so Chicano wise. And then, you know, like growing up back and forth, I grew up like around some of your homies and then um, over, over some of the mestizos. Shit, who all was over there? The old school gangs over there. But they were all like just neighborhood gangs, you know what I mean? Like not really too crazy like so so cheekies ended up uh, becoming uh pretty much now it's they, they became crips just because of that it was more of a response to the oldies no so so a couple of the ones that were cheeky from swansea moved and stood directly in the east side east side mm -hmm. and they started hanging out with a lot of the crips so the crips were like you know they started being down for them, they're like, well, why don't you guys start your own set? What, what hood did they, to, what would have been uh, the, the 30s from, it was the 30s from Denver that yeah. they branched off of? So I'm pretty, they, they came from, they were originally Cheeky 30, Cheeky Autos, the dudes that started it. And from, from what I was told, you know what I mean? And then, so we all used to hang out over there by the projects, 30th and the Rappel. And what's crazy is we're from the east side, but our, our main ally over there was CCRs. The West Siders. Yeah. And you know, cause that's when they were all standing in the projects. Yeah. So I think that's, and some of our homies are related to like their homie that's rest in chief. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was a big- I remember the shirts, the rest yeah. in peace chief shirts. I so remember he, the shirts. He was a big like um, influence, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was that was the East Side Crips. Nah, he was a West Side CC. No, 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 no. Chief. They killed him. Yeah. That was the 30s who killed him. Some of the, some somebody from the 30 from one yeah. of those hoods up there. And I think um. I remember that they were beefing hard back. Yeah. Then. Historically, across the United States, uh, Bloods and Crips are a black gang, but that yeah. didn't stick here in Colorado at all. Like yeah. nobody adhered to that at all. Um, and how did how did you guys look at that? Uh, 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 how did you look at that? How did you feel? Because you hear a lot of you hear a lot of people say, "Oh, well, I had to be, you know, extra hard, or I had to be extra this or extra that." But in Colorado, it was like I didn't see. And for me, I didn't see a lot of the racism. I seen a lot of people that was like, "If the motherfucker's with it, he's with it." Yeah, you know, honest, bro. It um, it has a lot to do with 
your surroundings. Now, like my case, my situation and where I'm from originally is the projects and the five points. So when we was growing up, you had certain families that were Spanish and in the projects, but there was a big handful of African, African-American homies too. And we all clicked. We never seen the racial tensions at all. Like, you know, you come outside, bro, and your bestest friend might be the black homie right here, and that's your brother. And you guys grow up with each other, and that's how the projects was. You know, it was just, um, uh, it was a big handful of black homies and African-Americans, but we had certain families that were Spanish and Latin, and it was like there was no racial tensions growing up at all, you know? Um, so that's kind of my background, and then, you know, when I was growing up, I'm a third generational um, banger from the neighborhood and my cousins were already, you know, fully rooted into the politics. So, you know, it was always family. I didn't see the racial tensions till I actually, till I hit the penitentiary, to be honest. And what, um, what hood are you from? Well, my family is original Brick Cities. They're original Brick Cities and they were actually a neighborhood that was before Crips and Bloods. Um, they were original Brick City from the projects, um, Arapahoe Corps projects in the east side. Um, when Crips hit and the revolution came out here, um, my block is 27 Arapahoe. 29th is where the CCRs came, the Front Hood Compton Crips. They were from California, the Front Hood Comptons. And everybody from the projects became Project Crips. So everybody from the projects actually became the revolution, unless you were ESGs. The ESGs were predominantly uh, Mexican foods. So hold on. Everybody calls me Dolo. Dolo? Yeah, yeah. Don't know me as Penny. Not in Oahu. Are you trying? Lots of Crimson Bloods? Yeah, yeah, it was a big, big Crimson uh, Blood uh, presence. They also get like, you know, the different, there's so many different ethnicities down there on Oahu. It's like the, it's crazy how many different ethnicities there are, and like they'll all have their own gangs too. Oh, yeah. It's like mostly just as like Hawaiian and Samoan and shit, and Tongans that are like bloods and crips. Like all Tongans are crips, Tongan crip gang. There's no Tongan bloods at all. Really? Yeah. And then Samoans, they're, they're, they get both Samoans, but the biggest ones are the sons of Samoan, which are crip. You know what I mean? Then, you know, the Puya Chinese, the, those are the bloods, you know, I think they're uh, the bounty hunters, I, if I remember that. Right. Yeah. You know, the small bounty hunters, bloods. But, uh, yeah, in the case, you know, the, the ones, they just, where it's like whatever town we're in, is it like, what we end up being. So, like, my whole town, like, Pablo, they be raw kids back in the day. To be here, then the niggas is all bloods, you know what I mean? Moved out to Denver, Colorado in 16. Yo, it was like, what was that, 2002? What's the difference between quick cripping in Hawaii and cripping in Colorado? Um, weapons. Like, I in Hawaii, we just, just fucking banged our face. Yeah, we used to hop on the bus. Yeah. And go put deep, nigga. Like, you take up, like, almost the whole bus. Yeah. And just go hop off and, like, just the, the field, like, you'd always be at a, at a baseball field or a soccer field. You know, football field. Rec center. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go see the people are hanging out. Yeah, and, like, we'd, like, that'd be, like, rumbles, nigga. Like, the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania and shit. Like, shit like that, fool. Like, these deep scrapping, nigga. Just, Chucking and bear pots, fool. You know, it wasn't too much about the gunplay out there, but you know, like, the, the you know, Pawnees and we're bred for that shit. We're warriors, you know what I mean? We're bred to do that. So that's what it is, you know. We've been scrapping since I was in kindergarten, since before kindergarten, you know. AWOL got shot. Yeah, and then. Whenever um, AWOL, I was in, I was in Mont View with AWOL. And little little psych, I think he killed a CCR. You know, it's crazy because them fools. That was one of my main homies in Juvian. And psych. Growing up, little psych. Huh. I know baby psych. I didn't know little psych. Yeah. I just never never really ran into him. But I knew baby psych. I was in what's called with baby psych. They, you should see uh, what you call. There's a channel called um, Swamp Stories that made a video uh, about Denver. And uh, they talk about uh, uh, Scythe uh, Mike 
and they call him Sicko Mike because they don't know no better because they're yeah. <laughs> I don't know where they got that but yeah they call him Sicko Mike yeah I was locked up with him too in the county I met him once in the county who big side yeah before he died I met him him um I'm, I knew Abel out here too I was a mob view with Abel before he went to the joint that fool was huge homie. yeah hey Jack stop that fool was huge, dog. Whenever we were in what you call that fool was huge. Whenever we were in Mobile, that fool was like 6'2", 6'3", pounds, like something like that. Still is, still is. Yeah. Last time I seen them. Yeah. So, okay. So a branch of it pops off and goes over there because I've heard that Cheeky Ala, Cheeky Ala and Cheeky Aya, right? And what is that? What is that? Uh, uh, what does that mean? So they say that Cheeky Ala... In, in Spanish, Spanish is like a, a spoiled kid that gets whatever he wants. Okay, like a brat or yeah. something? Yeah. Okay. And so in Spanglish, when they made it a gang, they were saying, we're them fools that are gonna get whatever we want, no matter what. And this is our neighborhood. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. So they, they pumped it up is what yeah, they did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Owned it. Yeah. Owned the shit. And, yeah, yeah. and like for real, like most of my homies are all like vice officers, like, and it's crazy. Like a lot of them are, those are doing time, time. Moving, moving stuff. Nah, like, like my homie Mo, that fool, he went to the joint for, for uh, shooting his first time. He gets out and um, him and uh, Munchies, I guess, allegedly, Cracked some Audi food at, over there at um, Dirty's, and he got life. He wasn't even out like two oh, years. Oh, that's think. I remember whenever Munchie caught that case. Yeah. That was that. Yeah. They're, so they were best friends. Man, Munchie did all that time and got out too. Yeah. He did all that time and got out, and then that's what happened with that. So yeah, so so then Mon got out the joint too, right? I was with him in, like, in 2000 and. Three was the last time I was with him. I seen him in like 2004. I think it was in 2004 he got out, right? And um, no, cause I went back. So two, like 2005 when I got out one of them times out of the joint and I seen him out. He comes by my grandma's crib to the projects and everything. Him and, him and my homie Chilo, right? They come over and he's all happy. Next thing I know, like a few months later, that's when um, him and Munchies, I guess they were chilling at Dirty's and uh, all faded and popped some fools off, but. Look, so, so you say the Compton's come out here, but them were Westsiders, but they came out mm -hmm. to the 29th? They came out to the 29th in Arapaho, yeah. Front okay. Hoods. Front Hood, you say, and Santana Block. Santana Block, but Santana Block was more, um, they were more in Aurora. The Santana Block, Compton Crips, that's where they kind of rooted on the X Block and Yosemite. That's where you see a lot of them fools. But Front Hood Compton, Biggie Boog, uh, Big Boogie Bass and uh, Ponytail, they came straight to the block, 29th and Arapple. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and that's where they rooted, bro. So everybody around there, because everybody that's from the projects actually represented Brick City. We were all, everybody from the projects called it Brick City back in the day. And they came straight to Brick City. Like a lot of Comptons will have Brick City tatted on them, you know? And that's our neighborhood, originally Brick City, original Brick City. So, you know, it was just love on me straight up. You know what I'm saying? And um, to be honest, oh, go ahead. Which projects were, is those the East Villages? Is that what you're no, talking about? No, Rappo, of course, was like from Five Points, 27th and Wowin, all the way down to Rappo, we're at 27th and Rappo. So that was the Rappo courts. That was the ones by the Curtis Park that was from like Rappo Street. All them projects that got tore down and they built condominiums now. Okay. 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 So, so, but you guys are East Siders because CCRs are all West Siders, right? Yeah, they, there's a lot of West Side foods from Compton Crip. Yeah, for sure. Okay. You know? But they're but, not from the East Side. Yeah, so, but but what, what people don't know is, so that's why a lot of, like, the East Side Trey Trays and the Trays, they pushed the line on the Comptons because they came over here from the West Side. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the Compton Crips actually have family, a lot of family that was tied in with Brick City. 
that's why the love was there you know what i'm saying because they had family that was from denver from brick city and them fools that was their bloodline family so that's why we were so close to compton cribs that's why the compton and, and brick city original brick city actually was like we ride together you know what i'm saying those are the homies okay you guys were linked up with them yeah okay. Because OG Hooklock, OG Hooklock from OG Original Brick City, his first cousins were Boogie Bass and them fools. And Boogie Bass is originator from CCR. He came from California. Okay. And then and then how was you guys activating with, with the, 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 the 30s? The, the so, Trey O's and the Trey Trey's and whatnot. The projects in the 30s didn't never ever really mix. We didn't really mix with Trey Trey's, you know, like you know, we're all, we're East Siders, but they did, they were more filler park. They were more the cage, like, and we in Project Cribs stood in the projects. We didn't really go into their sector of where they're from. And they didn't really come to the projects unless like it was the Trey Deuce Foods, you know, Trey Deuce Posse and the Trey Seven Dog Cities were in the projects also. But what's crazy about that too is the Chicky 30s, they were actually tied up with the Compton Cribs too because of Big Chief Lo. And uh, Santiago, he was family with um, the Chickies, and he was a CCR native food from Compton Crib Riders. So the Chickies actually, original Chickies, they're from 30th and Arapo. They were tied in with the CCRs. Them foods rode with CCRs, and then later down the road after he passed away, that's when they started, you know, dibbling and dabbling with the 30s from uh, 30th and Ave and all the trade trains. So right. originally, Chickies, original Chickies were actually messed with the Compton's tough. Okay. So the origin uh, of the beef between the oldies is racism. Is the the, 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 the oldies racism? That's what you would say? So I think the original beef was who's the harder brown gang. Okay. Right? Okay. And our homies were, I don't want to say deeper because they're deep too, but like, so our homies were coming from two parts of the east side though. They were coming from Swansea and the east side. Mm -hmm. And the oldies were living right in the east side, right there by like down in supers and all that shit, right? And uh, most of my homies were over there by the projects or in Swansea. Yeah. So they were coming like from both angles. Anybody that knows the east side knows like everything's all train tracks over there, right? So if you come up still and you come into the east side from that, when, once you cross the tracks, like there's multi cribs up there too. So when you're coming in that way, you got Cheeky's coming this way to you. And if they're coming from the projects, you know what I mean? You're stuck right in the middle. So, and then people started getting time and you know, you know, gangs are shit. Sometimes your hood's deep, sometimes your hood ain't. <laughs> shit. I didn't know the Comptons had that much of a foothold out there for that long. That was it, you know, yeah. I, I can remember, I remember when AWOL got shot. I was in Montview whenever I, well, I was with him. Whenever uh, we were both in, in uh, Montview together, um, and and I can remember him going back and forth, but uh, not as not as um, established as the '30s were. No, because '30s was a predominantly East Side, like straight East Side Denver. And don't get me wrong, it's straight East Side Denver, but everybody from the projects had to really maneuver a certain way because. A lot of the 30s and the Trey Trays, they were like, it's Trey Trey or nothing. Like, ain't no other, there ain't gonna be any other thing else in the hood. We are Trey Trey. We are the deepest, and that's what's going on. So, Project Crips had to stick together. Trey Dog City Crips, the Trey Seven Dog Cities, they were over there too. And everybody from the project stood together, bro. That's why, like, if if we got into it with the foods in the penitentiary, who was the first foods that was coming to our, coming to us, like, you guys good? This is the Project Crip and Compton Crip Riders. Yeah. Uh, rider liking them fools, you know? Because I done got into it with a couple East Side 30s and trays, and the first ones to come be like, hey, cuz you good? Because we ain't gonna let no rap old block homies, you know what I'm saying, be alone. Like, we going in. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's 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 deep, bro. It's it's deep. Yeah, I, I remember whenever the trade trays were pushing that line. I can remember them pushing that line in Juvenile. Yeah. Trying bulldog, trying to bulldog the trade deuces and shit like that trying to <laughs> trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. Square, dog. yeah 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 100%. i remember that i remember that okay so so you say third generation so brick city so this is going to be what this is going to be a gang like one of these old gangs from like the 70s then 
Yeah, it was original. Original Brick Cities was Brick City Poppers. They had brothers, Brown Brothers, where they used to dance on me. And um, they used to go to war with the gang from Park Hill called B-O-Y-Z's. That was the Park Hill original OGs. And those two gangs were like, before Bloods and Crips, they were already, they already didn't like each other. So they had, they had a lot of bad blood between each other. Yeah, I remember those two. I've met uh, some some folks from Boyz. Uh, uh, a lot of these old gangs uh, yeah. uh, are, are are interesting. Um, okay, so Brick City, Brick City, that was just a project gang then. It was a project gang, project yeah. gang. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, 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 the CCRs. When did the CCRs get out here? They um so. Ashbury and them fools over there in the 30s, they be, they rooted probably in the 89, really, on the Ashbury in the early 90s. Compton, the CCRs actually came after that. So they probably 94 in the summer of violence around that time, they really came out here deep. And they started quoting fools out here too from, uh, you know, the the area. You know what I'm saying? Um, some of them Compton crib riders are official East Side fools. You know what I'm saying? But they're all tied in with their family, bro. And that's that's kind of how them fools actually started getting their numbers up out here. Oh, they're related to everybody. Yeah. Okay. And some Brick Cities actually became Compton Crips. Uh, the fool went Crip and hit, bro. Some of the Brick City originals, they became Compton Crip. They became CCRs. You that know. happens to that, 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 that seemed to happen to a lot of it. You know what I mean? Over yeah. the years, over the years, whatever the new uh whatever the new popular gang is will absorb the older ones you know yeah, what I mean? yeah I, i've noticed that you um yeah racial tension with crippin because when i was out there homie before i hit the joint i was more my my attention was more on being active with the opposition so i had a lot of beef with red rack i didn't really i really never had no issues with the lopes i did have a couple issues with like trey trey fools when i got jacked or whatever homie but my main mindset was activation on the rare racks that's that was my main job like my circle was out here pressing the line because i actually moved to the west side um and my mom moved to the west side in the 2000s so i went to the west side high schools and off, off top they could already know they already knew i'm from the e they knew who my family was my family's a rap old trues you know what i'm saying so being from there, and we we rock a different way, homie. We're not like West Side fools. We got, you know, some of the homies just braided down. You know, we we have that East Side that East Side style, and they off top didn't like that, homie. So I had to be activated, and I got good at. It, you know what I'm saying so, like I said, I didn't really see any beef with the homies. Plus, I, I you know the love for cripping. That's what it was. You know what I'm saying. I never focused on beefing with the Crips. You know what I'm saying. But uh, when I got to the pen, homie, I seen that for sure. The racial tension, definitely. You got it from you. You got it from the like the Chicano side or the the native or the black. Um, I got it from everybody. <laughs> Let's just say that I got it from everybody. But my thing is, bro, I had so many enemies going into the joint. There was no way that I was gonna be able to put down the rag. There was no way that I was gonna be able to, you know, um, go anywhere else, bro. I had too much beef of cripping, homie. Like I put it out there. I used to make sure that my name was known to who we were beefing with. So I got hit, I got shot right before I went into the penitentiary. And uh, you know, I, I just, it, I just, I, I literally had too much enemy and history in the streets of being activated on, on the bloods, a lot of bloods, bro. And to this day, bro, I got, I actually came across homies that I've done beef with in the streets that we shook up. Like, hey bro, man, you know, talk about stories like cuz we couldn't even be in the same room like cuz what the hell's going on so you know it's been it's been a it's been a road bro honestly yeah okay uh you got shot before you got to the joint who got you not 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 in not in particular not any names but who got um, you? i got hit on alameda and alameda and hazel man so you know <laughs> but uh, we used to live on we... hazel in virginia dog <laughs> okay yeah two weeks before that you know, um, we, you know, we uh, did some stuff that got some retaliation because we, you know, we did some kind of crazy stuff. But yeah, bro, like, cause I lived, I was going throughout there. Like, I was true, you know what I'm saying? When you hear trooping, bro, we, we, we sweat, we sweat. There's a lot we used of red rags right there. And we used to love it because we used to be able to point them out, like, cause them fools are walking down the street and the homies, 
they used to we we called it blood sweeping, bro. We would hop out and you know, see if you're from if you're from the enemies, bro. You you know, there's no passes. You're not getting no passes at that, that time. So I caused a lot of trouble, bro. And they hit me. You know, they hit me. I got hit twice. They moved, nice. shot, shot the thing up, bro. And yeah. I thought I was dead, honestly. You know, what I'm saying. Did you good? They hit me in the chest, bro, and one in the arm. Yeah, definitely. I thought I was dead, homie. Because I it got hit, it hit by the chest where the heart is. So it ricocheted off the ribs, though. Boom, it broke that. And then my thing, like, it shifted my whole ribs to this day. I can still feel it. Not right? Yeah. Okay. So so you got hit, but what, woke up in the hospital. Everything was all right? Had to get surgery. I was splinting it up, you know, and that made me worse. <laughs> that that didn't calm me down at all, bro. I felt now I felt like nobody was gonna get fades. I don't, you know. So I didn't, I didn't leave. I definitely was not gonna fade nobody. Now it was time to get activated with that pistol play, and you know we was doing our thing, bro. And uh, that led to me going to the penitentiary eventually, you know. Oh. I looked at my little cousin, this nigga looks like Martin the Martian, right? And uh, I was like, hey, cuz, I got, I got, I'm not feeling over. They don't have to hurt for this shit. You know, I got hurt for me, I got banging, nigga. I'm on flow. I'm not going to fight you tonight. You know what I'm saying? And I just, boom, skirted on them hoes. Like, by the time uh, we shook them, I had Lilton, Inwood, Denver, and Sheridan chasing me. <laughs> It was nuts. Who like I thought we was gonna get in, and then you know who we put up? He's right, right in my neighborhood where I live right now. Like we got away from him, was right around the corner from where I live now. In Hawaii? Yeah, and out here. Is that what you go for? Yeah, I grabbed that bottle and I uh, ate with it out of. Where you go on an island if you steal a car? Choose around. <laughs> You know, that's what I got them for. Like, out there, it was an aggravated auto that This one was Grand Theft Auto. I got less time for Grand Theft Auto than I did the aggravated. Yeah. I got a year for the Grand Theft Auto and two for the aggravated. I put this ground, keep the shit out of him and try to start in there. <laughs> Somehow we did. Yeah. You did that out there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the fucking opened his door, started bombing on him. Pulled him out, kicked the shit out of him a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got in the car and left. <laughs> How long did he for that? Two. Two years? Is yeah, I was like 14. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like. And then you came out here? Yep, yeah, came out here, got a bitch pregnant, and fucking caught a grand trip auto case. Like the apartments by my grandma's, like every single visitor spot was a G load. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They fucking got me, they chased, like they waited for me to get in one of them cars and pull out and a fucking high speed chase ensued. Both yeah. times. Yeah, both times. I, I run from them home. You know what I mean? And like I put them down a high speed chase recently, like a few years ago. Wow. That's what happened to a lot of people's heads. People got locked up. Oh yeah. Okay. So so that that runs that way, but then you got a brother, you got a brother who's an Inca. Yep. So how that, and, and, and what is Inca? Because nobody really knows what Inca is. What is Inca? So, as far as I know, that's just their street, West Fifth. Pretty much shit, all the way from first to seventh or eighth, probably. Well, it used to be. Yeah. But so I went to Lookout Mountain. Right, I'm in Lookout Mountain, and um, my brother ain't nothing yet. He's, he's still just a kid, and you know, I'm already a knucklehead. And um, I'm already starting to, I'm at that wannabe stage, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to be down for myself, and you know, my cousin's already from the hood and everything, so I already got somebody that's gonna vouch for me. I just gotta put it out there that I'm doing these things so they know. Well, I'm in Lookout, and I call home one day, Ray's tells me, I tell him, what are you doing, bro? And he's like, no, I'm about to go to my miss's crib. And I'm like, my miss? I'm like, bro, what are you saying? <laughs> he's like, I'm about to go to mom's. I said, nah, what did you just say, though? He's like, I'm going to my missus. I'm like, bro, don't tell me you're gangbanging. He's like, well, this is what happened. I guess all the Incas were migrating from the west side, you know, when they're trying to put people in different um, projects or lower income. So a lot of Incas moved over there to the, to the uh, Columbines. Okay. 
he starts hanging out with um there was a gang of them too i mean there was like yugo um emerge um Huero, his on with jojo they called him deuce deuce um, there was a gang of them so he ends up getting put on while while i'm in lookout mountain and shit those are kind of small projects to have like five or six deep already there too yeah yeah so they so, kind of took that over yeah and then you know like I went to school with like Phil and them, right? So AKs and Byra Hood fools that, that I grew up with. From that name. Yeah, and you know, they like Ray too. So he kind of had some allies, you know, they kind of beefed with G's too. So, he, but he didn't care. He was already a little kid acting up and crazy as hell. Look out mountain, I'm in there with a the gang of G's that I'm actually cool as fuck with. Look at these fools like, look at these fools like, bro, bad news. They're like, what happened? And I'm like, my little brother's an Inca. So this fool looks at me, he's like, well, you're the homie. I'm like, no, nah, you don't, you don't understand. This fool is active. He, he ain't, there ain't no, oh, you're my brother's homie. Yeah. Yeah. These fools are talking about, you're, you know, whatever. and. You know, I, I gotta give them that. Is the Incas that I met, whenever they were banging, they were crazy fucking active. But as soon as they got to the joint, that was a different story. Yeah. But I mean, the ones I met were at, they were at Fool's Necks. Yeah. In Savio House, they were at this GKI Fool's Necks. <laughs> that, and the group a, owned <laughs> That's why I think um they kind of got died out on I me. Mean, I think the that, vicious. I think they were hard enough that other fools had to step in and, or they were going, they were branching out too much. You know what I mean? Trying to war with everybody. And, because when I met them, when I got out of lookout on me, these fools were active. Them fools yeah. were like, yeah. you knew that these little fools were Incas and they weren't scared to say it. In, Ju in the guild, like you said, in the mm -hmm. guild, them fools was in there banging shit. When I first went, there was fucking Spider, um, Taz, Fat Cat. Mm -hmm. um, Ike. Isaac was in there first time I ever yeah. was. Isaac was in there. Isaac and Danny. Yeah, I met um, Danny and uh, Lookout. Him. Came across some old, old school G. Isn't it? And he's, they, I'm not, I don't want to say his name, homie, you know what I mean? But he, he straight told me, he said, hey, when you get to the penitentiary, you're going to put down your rag, homie. You're going to put down your rag because there ain't too many of you on the crips. And me and this fool faded out over it. But my whole life, my uncle, my uncle's an OGG too. You know what I'm saying? So they would always tell me like, yeah, homie, I don't think when you hit that yard, you gonna make it. So make it. So in my mind, homie, I had to prove. I had to prove it. I had to prove it to myself. I had to prove it. Like this cripping ain't fake, homie. This cripping really the revolution. I'm pushing the line. So I I got good at warfare. And then I know a lot of people, homie, from the low. So I, I had a good name with a lot of OG homies. My homie Lil Too Sick, Tyrone Buckner, rode up to the county the first week I'm up in there. And then the enemigos hit the hit, hit the, the county and the little fool's trying to go home. And we, you know, we had to do what we had to do. We got to have cuz. So I'm a, I'm a Spanish crib, homie. I started, you know, like, man, cuz, what, you know, I, what am I going to do? You know, but me being who I am and a warrior, homie, it didn't allow me to... You know, I didn't, it didn't allow me to drop the rag and be like, cuz I'm not doing, I could, you know, I had too much history, like I said, bro, and I had to keep it a hundred for myself, you know, and that, that actually, that actually got me through the penitentiary. I got, you know, I, I've, uh, I experienced some situations with the homies though, definitely, you know what I'm saying? But that made me a stronger individual and helped me see stuff differently, definitely, you know? Yeah. Um, so when I first rode up to the yard, bro, um, Automatically, the Chicano Red Rags, the Chicano Red Rags were alert. Definitely, they like ah, oh. and, and I carried myself really aggressive, bro. I had a defeat, like because I'm I'm tripping with everything moving, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I have beef with some certain circle in the in the food that mainly I have beef with on the yard, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I I actually approached homie, I actually approached homie on some game banging shit, and uh, you know. He was me and homie had to fade out, you know what I'm saying? To this day, I actually ran into him on the other yard 
Um, and he knew, he knew what was up after that, bro. You know, but when the homies, the fools that were there from the east side had seen that, they seen that I was with us with it. Yeah. The OG homie, the OG homie from 30s and all them fools actually were like, cuz you a rider, homie. Like we got you, cuz. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of that yard was good. But you every yard has different politics, bro. Like you, you know, you're not gonna go to every yard and be like that, but that yard was like, cuz you a rider. And I handle business. I was the food that was checking foods off the table at Crowley. Like these are the Lokes table right here. What's crazy, what's crazy about it is so every yard you're gonna have different politics with the revolution of Cribs. And sometimes the Crips are set, separated. You have the East Side Fools, you have the West Side Fools, you have um, you have the Pueblo Fools, you have Springs Fools, and we don't all ever, there's yards we don't ever even talk. Homies won't even talk to them Fools. East Side Fools especially won't talk to them Fools, you know, um, because East Side yeah. is, you know, they got this persona. It's East Side over everything. We don't care about none of that, homie, you know, so they look at them. You know, they look a little bit down on them fools. But right. when I got to Trinidad, the whole the whole crib car was under one rag. Everybody, Mexicans, blacks, because two bona fide OGs, they were on the yard and they said, hey, the homies got to come together on this yard. We don't care what's going on in the other yard. And we were, you know, we were a solid bunch on Trinidad, bro. That was one of the funniest yard I've been on, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Activated together. Yeah, and we, you know, and one thing about the homies, man, when they get together, they start, you know, power tripping. But for me, you know, just how many times that, you know, I've been on a yard where the opposition was deeper than me. I'm like, all right, cuz, I love this. Let's go. Let's, you know, like, so I'm, I'm with all the shenanigans on Trinidad. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was a good atmosphere with the Lokes, bro. Like, we, we all rode under one rag. We were all together. Sure. It's nice when there's good leadership. <clears throat> yeah. It can make things. It can make things right. So, so uh, uh, we're, we're, even with, with Prippin in Colorado, it all matters with yard to yard to yard. Exactly. So exactly. you don't really know what you're going to step into. You might step into the cold shoulder. Step on a yard to the cold shoulder. That's exactly a hundred percent truth. A hundred percent true. Because if I think about some of these dudes, like these Cali Park Crips and stuff like that, they was Crips. But like we was in Walsenburg, there was a couple of them Cali Park dudes. They was by themselves. It was two Mexican dudes. It was by themselves. And then there was the rest of the Crips. You know what I mean? There was the East Siders and the West Siders. There was some conflict yeah. with the East Siders. But they were just kind of their own ride. It was them two dudes and the OGC. Remember the uh, original Gangster Crip? And no, North the OGCs. Yeah, the OGCs. Yeah. yeah, there was one of them, a skinny little fool, skinny little white boy. Looked like a white yeah. boy. I don't think he was one. But he used to kick it with them too. And that was like their ride. That was their table. That was their, you know what I mean? And they just yeah. kind of function together, you know? And what's crazy about Trinidad, it was two two enemy hoods, really. The CCRs and the trade, the thirties, bro. The OGs came together and said, we, we don't care if you're from the West, East, North, South, Springs, Arizona, California, you're riding under this rag. This is what it is. And if you don't like it, you're getting took off the yard. So that was, that was the, one of the best yards I've been on with the revolution all coming together, honestly, homie. Mean, to me these days that the Bloods and Crips are what, somewhat becoming indifferent to each other now? There's a seed um, fire, is that what it is? Yeah, well, because it's more of personal beefs now, bro. It's not like how it was in the 90s where you just, you know, the Bloods and the Crips are tripping with each other, like every, you know, cause you got, you got actually like, if we go into the essence of Crips and, and Bloods, in California, homie, there's actually Bloods and Crips that are linked up as one unit that beef with other Crips because the other Crips are so deep, you know? So it just, it's about personal beef, Sammy, between Crips and Bloods. Now, don't get me wrong, Denver, now Denver, there's a lot of uh, still that going on out here where it's, you know, who's automatically are just in them color, color bang, you know? And that's the youngsters, bro. They still pushing the line on each other. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I got uncles that are Bloods, bro, from Crenshaw Mafia. I got OG uncles, I mean, you know, before I was, before I got older, I couldn't be around them because I want to go to functions because automatically they know how I was. And now I'm a grown man. I can talk to these dudes and have, they're my, they're my dad's brothers. You know what I'm saying? I never could talk to them as man, homie. You know, so, but the youngsters still push the line out here like it's still the 90s, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's more the Chicano bloods and creeps, really, to be truthful. They're tripping with each other more than anything. <laughs> Some bloods rock with the movement with the Park Hill fools, but there is a lot of bloods that are Chicano that just 
they they just automatically say this is Chicano Bloods. And that was the separation because you had even the Crenshaw Mafias, bro. Um, the CMGs um, from Doucette Bloods, you know, Boom and Bang. A lot of them fools were like, nah, homie, this is, we're keeping it all Chicano. We're not messing with the black fools at all. But then you had the CMGs like West Ridge, the baby fools, they were the under them fools all. They mess with Park Hill fools. So they're like on some, you know, tying rags with the CMGs from uh, Park Hill. So you have different circles that just like to do this and do this. And then, you know, you have these new fools that ain't really, really bona fide as anything. And they're they're like kind of the outcast. So they start up a new blood hood, you know, but they have love for the blood wave. They have love for the blood wave. So, you know, that's kind of how the bloods actually, why they got so big in different chapters and sectors, you know. Um, but the Chicano Crips, bro, it's uh, OG's getting out. And, you know, they they seen what the number game was, so they started putting fools on. New new fools, they had to go get their numbers up because, you know, for a long time, the bloods, the majority of, you know, the West Side especially was bloods and G's, like you said. Mm -hmm. You know, but the OGCs, you know, KIAs and different fools and the 23rd, there's the new hood, 23rd block blood Crips, you know what I'm saying? And they're all Chicano. So they, they've been really doing their, their quote and really honestly. You heard of these uh, no, NFKs, No Face Killers? I have. But I, I think, is, is they, are they taggers? They shot up the homeboy's house. Dang. So See, taggers, he, he taggers says, are even true. <laughs> he, he says they're Crips. He tells me they're Crips. Okay, okay. And they shot up his They shot up his house. He moved. He, he believed them, whatever they was talking about. He got like seven kids. <laughs> you know, he was like, I gotta go. These people know where I live. And, and another thing is too, homie, before I get you know off of different things, um the crip politics are way different than blood politics, homie. Um blood blood politics for the most part were more about the unitized unity. So they embraced a lot more than Crips because Cripping was all about you know, you can tell the in-house beats and stuff, bro. It's it's more cutthroat. Cripping, like, you're not just gonna, you can't just get put, you can't even come to the, you can't just come on a yard and say you a crip. The homies are gonna protest everything about you. And that's why a lot of fools don't want to be crips because the homies make it hard. Now, bloods, anybody can hit a yard and say, I'm a blood and you're gonna get embraced. But Cripping's not like that, bro. Cripping, the crips, even the black crips don't even, they don't get along, homie. So what, what, why are they gonna get along with a Mexican crip? That's why a lot of right. fools, you know, that's why a lot of fools don't want to be Chris. You're Christian. actually right. Huh? Yeah. Now that yeah. I think about it, whenever I think about being in Lyman and I was in a pod, it was a crit pod. I mean, they could have ran the pod if they, if they wanted to press the line, it was theirs. Put it that way. Yeah. There was yeah. like seven or eight hitters in the same pod. And, and this one fool was yoked, homie, yoked, yoked. And he used to be out there just regulating on his homies. Exactly. Just for no reason. He he would make him, he'd flex his back and he'd make them just take off in his wings. Just hitting him yeah. in his wings, homie, so he could just take it. You know what I mean? And, and and but this was all the time. And the bloods aren't like that. You're right. The bloods in yeah. brains. The bloods are feeding. Exactly. And yeah. you're right, homie, you're right. The crips stay testing each other. Homie, I never thought of that, but that's absolutely fucking true. Yeah. My, and that's and I and I and like I said, I bang with a lot of the homies, bro, because of just you can't tell me just what to do. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna be able to just run game on me, bro. I'm I'm a G from my turf, bro. Like you think I'm gonna be a little soldier to you fools? I don't even know you fools like that. So, you know, I, I done had it out in Ben County Correctional Facility with the homies. You know what I'm saying? Got in a riot with the homies basically, with with a couple of our hitters. And we we set it off in Ben County with the homies, you know? So um yeah, bro, that's just how it goes. Like, I always tell the homies that like that. Like, me, I'm more on some spiritual stuff now, homie. I go to church and all that stuff. But, like, I've always told younger fools and this is what, like, especially, like, Mexican homies, you better think about this because you are putting yourself a target on your back being a Chicano crib or being a Mexican crib, homie. You're not going to get embraced. You might have to hit the yard and bang with the homies. And a lot of fools, when they hear that, they don't want to, you know, it's, they think it's a family thing, bro. And it's really not, you know what I'm saying? It's backwards sometimes, bro. But who's make their decision, homie? And then you see who's who on the yard. You see, you always hear that fool used to be a crip. 
that fool used to be a crip. You know what I'm saying? That's what pissed me off more. That's why I went extra hard because like you ain't gonna take cripping out of me. Yeah. And I and I and I would always trip. I would even the homies that were not with it, bro, that put down their rags, we had to get the heads up, you know? So it's crazy, bro. Definitely. I remember in juvenile, I just remembered his name, Clarence. He's from Trey Trey. He's yeah. got two big ass threes on the back of his arms right here. He went to Glenn Mills. And okay. he used to he used to test me because there wasn't nobody as big as him in the pod. <laughs> so he was like, you getting it, big. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm over here running with the Mexicans. He was like, nah, you know what I mean? And we used to go bodies. Dog, he used to make me go bodies with him. He used to fuck me up. Yeah. He was a crip, dog. You know what I mean? And it was the same thing. He was cool. It was all in fun. We were actually cool. He was cool as shit. Uh, the what's called the guard was Timmy Smith, uh, okay. the old Bronco, Bronco player. And he was super good with Timmy Smith. So my yeah. mom would bring me money. And then Timmy Smith would hook us up with fucking food. He'd bring us food and Dr. Peppers and like McDonald's That's and time. shit. That's yeah. High time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was cool. But yeah, but we used to go bodies and do all kinds of shit. Just because everybody, we were the only two that were built like men. You know, yeah. where he could really, where he could really get some, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. a punching bag, dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, bro. That's like. Yeah. That's cool. Man. What do you think about her? I think she, 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 All right, so where are we at? You did your time. We talked about you did your time. We talked about Crippin politics. Talked about the Crippin now, right? Let's talk about this, man. What's the deal with this? Uh, 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 is it like, what? It, what is, is Rolling 60 like nomad Crip? Like you could be a Rolling 60 from anywhere? Or what's the deal with this? Is it, is this, or is this like, this is by default what they put the rappers on? That's like a rapper hood? So, you know, I mean, the 60s, the original 60s though, bro, they're all combat foods, right? 60s, you know, they were just powerful foods, bro. Like the real 60s. 60s got so big because everybody in that neighborhood want to be 60. So they got deep, bro. You know, 60s became the powerhouse. And to this day, they're one of the deepest crip hoods in California. A lot of their soldiers and foods, they started going to other cities, states, and because of the number game, bro, everybody wants to be 60s, you know? And um, 60s, they're kind of like, when it comes to Denver, they're like the trays and all that, they're they're deep, bro. You know, they they got the numbers in. Even the neighborhood cars, the wrong 40s, wrong 90s, you know, wrong hundreds, bro. They all fall under basically the neighborhood car, bro. And the 60s is the most predominant of all of them. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, it's it's everywhere, bro. 60s is just a, a gang that's worldwide, the biggest crib hood in its and numbers. It's, and it's the leader of the neighborhoods. It's yeah, the it's the neighborhood. So when I say there's bloods and crips that actually click up to beef, the, the A trays and the Hoovers, they click up with uh Fruit Town Paul Rules. They're three, moving, grooving, and swooping. They're all one unit. And this is Bloods, Crips, and Hoovers that beef with the, the neighborhoods because the neighborhoods are so deep. They're too deep for everybody, bro. You know, so it's 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 crazy, bro. It's deep. Yeah. yeah, that's just that's one of them games that are just everywhere, bro. And who's want that number game? To be a hundred because like the chicky thirties are really stamped, you know, like through the east side. And that's one thing, homie. You gotta understand, like the chicky thirty crips before any other Chicano hood, they're pretty much the stamp of Chicano Crips. So they're really stamped. I mean, you would, that's that, a lot of fools even thought I was a Chicky just because how stamped they are. That's one of the, that's a hood that you hear, Chicky 30 Crips, Chicano fools, you know? So the East Side stamped them fools, but you have two different Chicky hoods too. And I know you probably know this, you got the lot of Chickies and you got the Chicky 30 Crips, but the 30 Chicky 30 Crips, the rap old block fools, them fools are babies from the East Side. It's like a, it's it's a thing, homie. It's you know with uh with them, you know especially the 30s now. A lot of the chicky 30s are tapped in with the trains. So 
you know that's a di- that's that's a different ball game it's a new generation because a lot of them chickies you know um they actually are tapped in with the trays now bro the tray fours the tray trays so they're pretty they're pretty like this now my uncles cousins um, i started prospecting at 12 years old with the homies my older cousins is the older older homies the og homies um and uh, to be truthful, that was the father figures. That's why I even, you know what I'm saying, magnetic towards that way. Okay. So 12 years old, you hanging with the hood. So you're going to be live from there. You, you doing a juvenile time? Um, I caught an assault. I didn't, I didn't really uh, get, I got probation out, out of the assault. So basically, I didn't really do too much juvenile time. I went to Mom View, you know what I'm saying, stayed over there for a couple months. And uh, got a you know an assault case, man. When I was younger, and I got a I got probation for it. Okay. You know. Okay. But then, so so uh, you was in my view. That means you was in Jefferson County. Jefferson County, man. So you was in so you was in the Red Rag neighborhood. Yeah. You know, I uh, it was crazy, bro. Cause so when I was younger, you know, um, I we born on the block, twenty seven Arapaho Street. Moms, you know, she she basically. Didn't have a lot of help from Pops. Pops was in the penitentiary, you know what I'm saying, throughout my age, throughout my childhood. He finally gets out, and um, me and my dad start kind of building a relationship, but he was in and out of the pen. He get My dad actually got um, hit. They murdered my Pops on 30th and Arapahoe Street. 